Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Dishonored 2 Complete Stealth Pacifist Walkthrough and this is Mission 8, also known as the Grand Palace. And we have a busy night ahead of us and our actions in this level are gonna affect the lives of a lot of people. Because we are going in to find the Duke Luca Abel and end his reign over Karnakia. Because the Duke is not a nice guy, so instead we're gonna put his body double in his place and also we're gonna take his key, go into his vault and steal the Delilah's soul. Because in mission 7, you know that horrible mission with the timepiece, we found out that Delilah has trapped her soul in an artifact and we need to retrieve that to make her mortal again so we can defeat her. And the beginning part of this mission is basic stealth 101. We just blink up on these pillars, stay out of the guard's ways. Guard's way. Whichever is most correct of that. And I'm gonna try to get up to that tree. Or I am gonna get up to that tree, <laughs> actually. And on the other side of that tree there is one of those watchtowers. So be very careful. But you know how the watchtowers work by now. They have a giant spotlight sweeping back and forth, which is white. If you end up in its beam, it will turn red, nuke you, and you will die. So, don't get into light. <laughs> Stay out of the light, Caroline. But as soon as it sweeps past, we're gonna blink over to this little balcony. I was a bit too quick with releasing my blink, so I ended up on the edge. If you get up to the edge of that platform by the tree, you will be able to get over to the balcony properly, so you don't have to risk it like I did. And in the apartment in front of us, there are quite a few blood flies, so be very careful. I'm not quite sure if there is a Lord of the Flies zombie guy in there as well. I have never seen him, but don't wait here for too long. Instead, we're gonna go up on the roof. I'm gonna blink right through the edge. That is the great part about blinking ability. Sometimes you apparently can go right through geography. <laughs> and we're gonna get up to this windmill so we can power down the wall of light and continue on to the Grand Palace. But as I said, we're gonna take down the Duke and replace him with his stand-in, his body double. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is find out which is which, because their locations are random. One of them is always in the Duke's chambers, as far as I know. You will get a target reticle on the guy who's in there, so he should be your first priority. But which one of them, it is, as I said, is completely random. So when you get in there, you're gonna have to listen to him monologuing. That is easiest way to find out if it's the real duke or the body double. Because the body double talks about his work being to pretend to sign papers but at least he reads them or uh, that the duke mocks his paintings because the body double is very good at painting so the real duke takes credit for them and mocks his own paintings and claims that it is the body double that has painted them. And after you find out which is which, I don't know what the Duke says, <laughs> I can't remember, but if it doesn't talk about those things, you will know that it's the body double. And if it is him, talk to him and say you'll get a dialogue choice that either I think you're the body double or die horrible person because you're the real Duke. Say you're the body double and you will make up a plan that will put him in charge and throw the real duke in jail. And Alice, then we go for the duke and sedate. If it is the real the duke. duke in there, just go up, sedate him and hide him in the bedroom. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get there. First we're going to blink across these lampposts. You can also hear that the guards down there talk about the uh, body double being a smoker. So if you see a duke, or someone that looks like the duke and he has a cigarette, that is also a clue that it is the stand-in. But we get the target reticle, since we have gotten to the palace, and we are going into the chamber. 
So first I'm gonna get over this wall and we're gonna head in through this for a little window in uh, the roof. And as this is a grand palace there are a lot of guards around and there are also quite a few clockwork soldiers. Some of the soldiers are passive and some of them are active and patrolling. But in this mission it's quite easy to stay away from them. More, Even more easy than in a lot of other missions because you have the entire roof to yourself. But what I like to do when I get in here is to get up on this little lamp over to my left. First I'm gonna venture a bit further into the room and try to trigger him talking. And you hear him talking about that at least he reads the documents then I instantly know okay the body double is in here. Because I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again it's completely random whether it is the real duke or not. But after a little while he's gonna tell his guards to go away because he wants to be alone and that's when you should make your move. And this is consistent for both of them. <coughs> so we just wait around for a little while. As he, uh, a man just needs time by now he says it. He wants to be alone so he sends the guards away and I head back up onto this lamp. You can blink up onto that railing and talk to him as soon as the guard starts walking down the stairs. But you know me, I'm a cautious player, so I played a waiting game on top of the lamp instead. And I edited out some waiting over there. Or at least... No, actually I think first I was a bit quick to blink down. <laughs> I blinked down right into the arms of that guard who walks down the stairs. But here he comes, and we blink down behind him, and we can go up and talk to the stand-in for the duke. So we head up the stairs, he's standing up here, f moping about, feeling sorry for himself. He takes credit for my paintings. Yes, he talks about the paintings. And, and also the real duke is the only one that has a key to the vault. That is no also something you should remember. Or kiss my hand. I'm not that kind so of we visitor. skip that little cuts, that little dialogue, and we choose, I think you're the body double. You're the Duke's and you double, make up the you? plan to take down the real duke, so we can make... Karnaka a better place to live in. And that door over there to the right, the white one, there is a latch on that. If you want to, you can undo that latch. Do not head out because there is a guard out there, but it will make your progress back in here a bit easier. And also up where I, where I talk to the body double is the door to Duke's bedroom. If it is the real Duke in here, sedate him and place him on the bed in there and close the door because when we put our plan at work we are gonna take his body up to this big uh, bed thing here in the middle of this room so don't then you won't have to transport him for very far but remember to undo the latch on that door i'm gonna get back to that later but now we're gonna go head out the way we came in and go up on the roof and over to the real real guy and this was quite interesting when I started recording this mission because on my previous runs one of them was in the chamber as I said and the other one was in the throne room on every playthrough I think I played for it three times before I started recording this and every time he was in the throne room so I was in the belief that that was consistent that that was consistent. On this run, however, he wasn't. <laughs> so I had to do some fanciful editing because I uh, went out, realized that the Duke was nowhere to be found when I got to the throne room, so I had to go around for a little while. Because for some reason I didn't notice the second target screen <laughs> or the second target reticle on my screen, so I had to do some improvisation. And I realized that he can be in another location. I don't know if there's more locations he can be in. I assume there is. But I tried some different paths over to where I found him. And 
also different uh, strategies to get into him and this is the most consistent strategy I found. So we just head over this little pathway, whatever it's called in English, outside the window. And he's in this room and also he is surrounded by some guards. So we're gonna wait around for a little while until he sends them away. But we continue on this little walkway and onto this balcony. There is one of those, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> alarm things out there. But you don't have to worry about that because no one will be even slightly aware that we're here. So I sneak up here and I head up on the little ledge thingamabob over the door and I wait for him to send his guards away. Because then I know that he will be completely alone in there. So we can go in and put him to sleep like a good little duke. And enjoy his last minutes of, ruli of ruling. Being a ruler. Of ruling Karnaka. Before we put the body double in his place. But we sit up here, we play the waiting game, as always, and very soon he's gonna tell all the guards to go away because he wants to be alone. And that's when we can head in there. Anytime now, dookie boy. Come on now. Yes, he's told the guards to piss off and there are two guards going out on this balcony. First one opens the door, second one closes the door. And now we can make our moves. So I'm gonna go in here. And this threw me off a little bit because I was sure that he was in that room to right. And then I said, real realized he was over to my left. And that was a bit sloppy on my part because he could just as well have spotted me. But luckily for me, he didn't. But be very aware when you go in here. This must be the key to the Duke's vault. And we used one of the sleep darts so we picked up in mission five. Told you we would put them to good use. <laughs> Makes everything a lot more easy. So we just pick him up and we are heading back up to the Duke's chambers. And business as usual, we go out, we retrace our steps, because I know that that path is safe. And I'm also going to talk a little bit why you should take off the latch on that door. Because I make a little mistake that almost cost me a reload. <laughs> I end up almost getting spotted. And I realize that there is a simpler way to get back to the chamber than the path I choose. Because we go on this little walkway ledge thing. And I'm going to blink upwards, I think. And I end up on the outside of the Duke's chambers. So if I had undone the latch, I could have gone in there and sped this mission up for a little bit. Instead, I'm going to have to head up on a vent and up on the roof. And I'm going to try to blink up on to that edge, but I didn't feel really confident in doing it. Uh, there would have been a big risk that I would have blinked right into the roof and fallen down to in front of all the guards. But that is the door I was talking about. If I had taken off the latch I could have gone in through that door and now instead I'm gonna realize that it's locked and I'm gonna have to go up and go in through the window on the roof once more. So this is just to speed up the mission for a little bit. Going back up in the roof or in through the roof is a very safe strategy because I know there are no guards there. This was a little bit improvisation, at least the return part to the chamber was. And this is one of those moments where I have to do a very exact blink because I tried to get the reticle up on that vent and I realized I can get it up there the very second I peek at my jump. I don't even know if that sentence is correct, but you know, it's one of those moments where you have to release the blinking button right before you your jump peaks. And that can be a bit risky, can be quite frustrating, so the best thing is if you can get in through the door. 
but I'm not gonna dwell on that anymore. Instead, we're going in here, we're gonna place him on the giant bed in the middle of the room, and the guards are... And you're gonna go into a cutscene where the guards take him away as an imposter and as a crazy man. And we can head on to the vault. And inside the vault, there is a clockwork soldier patrolling around the room where the relic with Delilah's soul is. All right, it's your but you don't need to worry about him all that much because as soon as you pick up the relic, you are gonna trigger a cutscene where you release the power of her soul and that will make the clockwork soldier explode into a thousand pieces. So all you have to worry about is not getting spotted by him when you get into that room. And that is very easy because we're gonna go in through the main entrance to the vault since we have the key now. There is a back way in there. I think you reach it through the cellar of the Grand Palace. I haven't experimented that much with that. I just wanted to find the simple, most simple, most consistent way and most easy to follow to get there. And the vault is in that globe-like building. So we're gonna get down here and we're going down to the balcony where we found the real duke. And as you know, there are two guards standing on that balcony, so I'm gonna pick up a glass and get their attention where I want it to be. Because when we blink over to that roof, we are gonna be exposed for a little while before we can head into the entrance, and I didn't want to risk any of them looking in my direction. Because their sight cones can be a little bit random, and you can see one of them is sort of turned that way. So I just pick up this glass, move back a little bit, and throw it into the corner. And they go into full alert, because someone broke one of the very expensive crystal glasses. And that bastard must pay. But anyway, we blink onto this roof, and we can go in. And there is a clockwork soldier patrolling outside, so be very careful. And there's also, I think there's an arc pylon down here over to the right, so be very careful where you jump in through this window and pick out the whale to whale toil whale oil tank immediately so you don't risk being sapped by that thing but the vault door opens and we can head in and up on this balcony we are going down to uh, the relic and you can hear the clockwork soldier walking back and forth I suggest you going around up here so you can blink right down in front of the relic because I'm not quite sure where the clockwork soldier is right now. As you know, they can see both in front and in the back of them. Behind them <laughs> was the word I was looking for. So be very fast when you go down here. So I'm not quite sure where he is, but I thought to myself, okay, balls to the wall, no guts, no glory. Blink down, grab the relic, and he explodes. So that went that went very easy, very streamlined, and we can go back up to the second floor of this vault and head back out the main door. And all that remains right now is to get back to Megan Foster and her skiff and return to the dreadful whale because we have done what we set out to do. And now we just need to get out of here alive. And as I said, to the left there is a clockwork soldier patrolling outside that door. So I recommend blinking over here in behind that wall. And when you go over this little wall, be very quick. Jump up, blink down. One, two, very quick. Because if you stand up there for too long, you will be exposed. And you're at the risk of getting spotted by the clockwork soldier. And... They are not pleasant. And I don't think they can... I don't think it negates the shadow trophy. I'm not 100% sure if you get spotted by a clockwork soldier. I think... No wait, on second thought, I think it does. It doesn't negate the clean hands trophy. If you destroy a clockwork soldier. That's right. So always stay out of their line of sight. And here comes Megan with her skiff, which I have some troubles getting into, which is quite amazing, 
I can blink across rooftops, I can sneak past the hundreds of guards, but I can't get into a simple boat. <laughs> the limitations of a poor assassin from Dunwall. But I do my best, and I get in there in the end. So we are done in uh, Karnaka, actually. And we go to the mission end screen, as and you can see, as always, except for mission 7, no... No one killed, no bodies detected, no nothing. But I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.